You guys have been asking me for this video for quite some time, and so here it is. We're going to do a brew father water tutorial. How's it going? My name's Brian. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how to and tip videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Now, water, you know, no secret, water is a huge part of beer. And, you know, professional chefs don't go get a box of cake mix and bake a cake. You know, they formulate their own ingredients, they formulate their own recipe. And so when we're making beer, it really makes sense that we start with all of the basis ingredients. And let's take a look at what we're going to need in order to adjust water for brewing. Now, these are the things that I like to use. This is by no means a complete list. There are other things you can use as well, but this is what I use and what I recommend. Um, you're going to need some lactic acid. You're going to need some calcium chloride. You're going to need some Epsom salt. You're going to need some gypsum. And I also like to throw in some sodium bicarbonate, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, you're going to need a milliliter applicator, a accurate scale, and I mean down to the hundredth of a gram because sometimes the, the measurements are down that, that close, uh, and a pH meter. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about these ingredients real quick, kind of let you know a high overview of what they do. Now, lactic acid, that will actually adjust your pH or reduce the pH in your, your mash. So you can bring your mash down from what, you know, 5.4, 5.6, 5.8, whatever, down to whatever level you want it to be at. Now, calcium chloride, that actually contributes to softness or sweetness or mouthfeel of the beer. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as well. But that's what calcium chloride does. Now, it's not the only thing it does, but this is kind of for a beginner understanding that's what it does. Epsom salt contributes both sulfates and magnesium. Now, it's important because if we're starting with RO or distilled water, it doesn't have any magnesium in it. And yeast definitely needs magnesium for health. So, you know, by adding some Epsom salt to your recipe, you're going to add some sulfates and you're going to add some magnesium. Now, gypsum kind of does some of the same thing that's, that the Epsom salt does. It adds sulfates to the water and it creates, it makes the water hard or it accentuates hops. So you, you can have a, it creates a, a hardness in the water that, will accentuate hops and bring out bitterness a little bit more in your hops. Uh, sodium bicarbonate, I just mainly use that to increase pH. Sometimes if you have a really dark recipe that has a bunch of roasted grains in it, you might have an acidic mash that actually drops you down below 5.2 and you wanna be between 5.2 and 5.6. So the milliliter applicator, you don't have to go spend a bunch of money on that. Just go to like your local pharmacy and tell them you need a one milliliter applicator for medication and they'll give you one. I mean, it's, I got the one that I'm showing here at Walmart. So um, the accurate scale, like I said, down to a hundredth of a gram. And it's kind of funny. I got this off Amazon, but I just noticed when I was making this video today, it says G dealer. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that I don't know about these uh, Chinese scales. Um, and then finally a pH meter. The pH meter is just to trust, but verify on the pH reading because pH meters, you know, will tell you where your pH actually is. The software, and I've used, you know, Beersmith, Brewing Water, Brewfather, all of them. The pH is just an estimation. It's, it's a good educated guess on a calculation, but there are variables in your mash that can throw it off. So trust but verify. If you, you know, brew a batch of beer and you brew it multiple times and you're coming up with the same pH all the time, then certainly, you know, you can trust whatever the readings are in there. So let's jump into the Brewfather software. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring you over to profiles and just kind of show you a couple things real quick. Um, I wanna talk about the water profiles. Now there are multiple water profiles in here, both for source water as well as your target water that you wanna, uh, for what the beer you wanna brew. Now I certainly recommend distilled water or reverse osmosis water, taking us back to that whole chef in the cake thing, you know, you want to know exactly what's in there. So if you can't do that or you don't want to do that, I definitely suggest you get your reading done from like Ward Laboratories. And I did a video and I'll put a card up here for that on entering that report into the software. And one quick note, a correction on that that I didn't realize when I was making the video um, is that the report from Ward Labs comes with uh, SO4S measurements and that's for the SO4 here on the screen you'll see. So that needs to be actually multiplied by three in order for it to be correct in the application for the software. And then the NA plus reading, that actually needs to be multiplied by 4.43. So whatever the report says, whatever, whatever's on the report 
For the SO4S, you need to multiply that by 3. And then the NO3N is what it'll show up on the report as. Needs to be multiplied by 4.43 and that number in, in, into here. Now, real quickly, um, I use reverse osmosis water. And you see this star here. Now, what this star is, basically, that's your default profile. So if you don't want to have to go in and change your your uh, water profile every single time you brew, just go in there and put a star by whatever it is that you use. And then what will happen is it'll save that as your default profile. All right, so let's jump over into a recipe. I'll show you how the calculator works. Okay, so this is a, a hazy IPA. I know this is a big one of topic. A lot of people brew hazy IPAs. And so this is one that probably interests people more than just about any other style. So we'll, go, we'll take a look at it. So we're going to go all the way down. It's a whole recipe that I brewed before. And we're going to take a look at our water. So here are, here's our water. And we're going to go into the calculator. And it will show our recipe and all that stuff. Now, one of the things that I do want to show you, so I've got the source water is that reverse osmosis. And then if you're using your house profile, like let's say you've sent it off the ward laboratory or whatever, and your ions are too high for whatever particular type of beer you're brewing, you can select this dilution and actually dilute your source water with like distilled water or reverse osmosis water to bring those ions down. And this would be the way that you would do that. So you would select that and then you would just put however much you, you know, what your profile is and then how, how much you want to, you want to dilute it as so. That's how we would do that. All right, so then, now if you are brewing a beer that is not in the style list, so there's there's some style listings in the, in the software, and they will actually show you all of the different styles. The one style that's not in there is the New England IPA. I looked through all of them. The, the New England IPA is not in there, but it is as one of the target profiles. So... You can actually use that as, as an optional method. And you can, when you go in there, you just look and see what you want to select for your, your profile. And that's the Hoppy New England IPA. So in that, we've got uh, the, the, the calcium is at 100. The magnesium is 18. Sodium is 16. The chloride is at 186. And the sulfates are at 93. Now you can see here, one of the characteristics of a New England IPA is that the sulfates are usually half of what the chloride is. So you have a little bit of bitterness accentuation from the sulfates or the gypsum like we talked about earlier. And then the calcium chloride is at a higher number for the recipe so that you get that silky mouthfeel that you look for in those New England IPAs. Now you can go higher than this with these. You know, it's not recommended that you go over 300 parts per million on your chloride and it's not recommended that you go over 400 parts per million on your sulfate. So in an IPA where you would want a drier, crisper beer, you would kind of flip-flop these two numbers. So the, the sulfates would be higher than the chloride, and that would give you a more accentuated bitterness, and it would be a drier mouthfeel. Basically, that's all you do is you, go, you hit save there, and then what you would do is you would just hit auto once you've selected your profile, either your style profile or your target profile, and then you hit auto, and it would apply those changes to the recipe. Now, you do have a couple of options in here that I want to show you as well when you get into the water here. Now, when you get into the water, there, there are a couple of things I want to show you. Open settings, and this will actually take you to ingredients. Now, I think the default is going to be gypsum, calcium chloride, and Epsom salt. I don't know that baking soda is in there, but this is where you would add that. And you can do, you can do sparge, or you can do mash, you can do both, you can do auto. So this will auto calculate these in there. The sodium bicarbonate, I don't have it as auto, but I can click it as auto. So if a beer that I'm brewing that is darker and has a lower pH, this will try to automatically use the, the baking soda in that auto calculation feature. Um, there are a bunch of other things in here. CR, I, I don't know what some of these things are, quite honestly. Sodium metabeta sulfite, chalk, baking soda is in there, obviously. Slaked lime, canning salt, magnesium chloride. So, you know, you can add or subtract whatever ingredients that you have on hand. And one thing about ingredients, every one of the ingredients that I listed, except for gypsum, can be found at the grocery store. Uh, the, the Epsom salt can be found in the pharmacy section. The calcium chloride can actually be found in the canning section, and that is called pickle crisp. It's actually calcium chloride, but if you're, if you're running low on it and you need it for a brew day, you can run to the store, go to the canning section, and pick up some pickle crisp, and that is calcium chloride. And then sodium bicarbonate, that's just good old baking soda. So you can either, you can get a big box of it and put it in a container. Incidentally, before someone asks, I know they will, those containers that you saw all of my salts in, those are actually from the Dollar Tree. So 
you know, they were a dollar each. They worked perfectly. I also use the use some containers from the Dollar Tree for my grain storage. So go to the Dollar Tree, have a field day, spend about five or ten dollars, and you'll have plenty of containers, more containers than you want to do with. So, all right. So let's talk about the pH. So now we're going to get into the lactic acid. So we'll go back into the calculation again, and we're going to scroll all the way down to our mash uh, acidification. So you have the choice of either using phosphoric acid or lactic acid. Now, I personally like lactic acid because of the fact that it is, generally it's 88%. And so, you know, 30 milliliters was with phosphoric acid. So you can kind of see the difference in the amount of acid you would have to use. So you can see, if you watch this number up here or right here, you can see that with 30 milliliters of lactic acid, the pH would be way too low. So I'm probably going to say like 10% of that would be like three. So that brings us down to 3.5, but you can use the arrows here and you can just click on that and just keep adding more lactic acid until, actually I'm reducing lactic acid, sorry about that. You can keep adding lactic acid until you determine what pH you want. So if you want to get all the way down to 5.2 or 5.25 or whatever, you can just keep adding. So like 3.5, that would take us to 5.3. So if we did four milliliters, that's getting us down at 5.3. And you can see, so you can see kind of how that affects it. And that's really, you know, that that's like the gist of it there. Um, I don't always necessarily use the sparge additions. I do use them in the mash, but if you don't want to use them in the sparge additions, if it's too much trouble or whatever, obviously if you're doing a full volume batch, then you don't have to worry about it at all. But a lot, a lot of times when I brew with my large system, I've got so much water in the hot liquor tank that it doesn't make sense for me to treat all that water because I don't use it all in the batch. So a lot of times I'll just make sure the pH is correct, which I use RO water and it's at 7.0. So I don't really ever have any issues with that. But so once you do that and then you save it to your recipe, basically it's going to show up in there and then it's going to show you what items you want in the mash. So you can see here that I don't have anything in the sparge. Uh, calcium chloride, Epsom salt, gypsum, and phosphoric acid, which I actually swapped that out for lactic acid just now. But that is a basic high-level overview of how you do the water additions and it's really it's actually simpler than what you might think so and you know with with these you can actually get in there if you want to get in there and, and mess around with the target profile you can you can go in there and you can actually open it up and find that uh new england ipa and then you can actually copy it let's say we wanted to go crazy and we wanted to copy it and we wanted to do let's say we wanted to push the limit so we want to do 300 just do a test do 300 and 150 so have our calcium chloride at the outer range of where it's at and sulfate's about a you know 50 percent of that or half half the uh, parts per million of that do that run a test see how you like it and uh you know see see what see what it results in the beer um these are things that you can do and, and experiments and and try things out and uh, i wouldn't go the reason you might you don't want to go over the, the 300 and the 400 300 on the chloride and the 400 on the sulfates is because you can definitely start to taste them and get a mineral taste then um you know that, that's one of those things that you can do uh and overdo it if you will so you know i hope this video was helpful to you it was a very high level overview I just wanted to kind of introduce you into the water system and how it works uh, a friend of mine david heath he's got a youtube channel you may know him <laughs> um he's got a really in-depth water video and i'll put a put a link up here to uh the card for that and then all the things that i talked about uh i'll leave in the description down below the scale all the other stuff that I've done, you know, obviously you have to go to Dollar Tree yourself. You wouldn't want to order those online. But all the other stuff that I mentioned in the video, I'll put down in the description. Extra points for anybody that can tell me the movie that this shirt is from. <laughs> I'll do movie shirt trivia again. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.